Now, I wasn't going to do anything else to this until I get all the bits, but I'd noticed that even though the petrol is off, we're still getting a load of it coming out on the floor there and dripping out. So there's two problems. The, the cock ain't working. It's coming out the overflow pipe there. So the cock ain't working, but also we've obviously got a stuck float in the carb there. So it looks like my plans have changed. I was going to try and do some, tick a few things off my list of things to do. I should be fitting those airbags on my car, really. I need to do those because I keep driving along and the suspension keeps slamming down. Those of you that have a TD5 will know what I mean. But <laughs> let's, let's, have a, let's have a rip into this carb, shall we? It's, uh, you know, it's accessible right there to get to, so... I suppose we'll have to have a look and see if we can get that cock to work at all. Look, uh, there is a bit more coming out, look, a bit more. I'm surprised there's any petrol left in it, it's been sat there overnight. As I walked up to the door, I thought I could smell a bit of petrol there. Shut up and sit down. <laughs> Seems the cock is working. The cock does work. Yeah. Uh, the cock does work. Because uh, there's no fuel coming out of it even though I've disconnected the line, the pipe from up there. Now, the first thing I notice is we've got some wood screws. And we've got a hell load of petrol in there. It's all coming out all over the place. I'm doing this on the concrete floor, not on the carpet because the... Oh, hello, what's happened here? I've run out of light, the light, <laughs> light's gone out. Um, yeah, I'm doing it on the concrete floor because uh, it's going all over the carpet and, uh, yeah, it kind of... I forgot that the carpet was soaked in petrol and then I kind of caught fire. But anyway, we've got wood screws holding the, uh, the bowl on, which, oh, well, kind of explains it all, really, doesn't it? Look at that. I bet they've even still got the pointed end on them. Oh, they haven't. That's interesting. Right, anyway. Let's take this off and have a look to see what condition we are inside. Oh. Oh. I reckon them... I reckon they've been in there. They've been in here before, I think. Um, uh, the people we got this from. That's when that ah uh, that might probably make sense really. Why they said oh it, it's got carb issues. Yeah, it's got carb issues because you've been in here. That's why it's got carb issues. You've been in here. And uh, right. other than that pin falling out and this falling out, it doesn't seem to be an awful lot of potential damage or anything wrong but obviously that float isn't that float's obviously not working once that's once the bowl's back on there because it just keeps coming out the choke work and the choke doesn't the choke doesn't stay up either the choke should stay up all right i've moved the operation slightly over here Got a little bit of shadow now, but that's not the end of the world. I'm sure you lot are tough enough to deal with a bit of shadow. So, the float is working now. I wonder if that was in the way. So, let's put this back together. It all looks alright in there. I can hear it going up and down. So, the float's not getting stuck now. So I'm going to put it back together because it's interesting how there's only two screws that hold that in, hold that on. Usually you have four. It's interesting. Even on, the, on the carb on the RM is uh, four. Anyway, so I'm going to put this back together and see what we get. We should now get. Fairly functional. It's not even dirty in there, so 
you want my opinion, I'd say somebody's rebuilt this, this whole engine, relatively recently, because the car was all clean around it, the engine's all clean, and we've got new gaskets, we've got green new gaskets everywhere. So I'd say somebody's rebuilt it, they ain't done a very good job on that, I've obviously missed half of that off. The chain, to be honest, looks like a chain off a bicycle. I would be very surprised if that's a genuine, or even a real chain. It needs oiling very, very badly. But, you know, usually when you get an old bike or a used one, it's covered in dirt. But this ain't got any dirt in it anywhere. It's, it's hardly got, it's, everything's all clean. So I reckon somebody's rebuilt it and that's when they must have painted the frame. So whether it was the people that we bought it from, or whether it was somebody else, I don't know, but somebody has at some point. So it'd be interesting to find out what they rebuilt, whether it was just top end or if they done the whole lot and why they did it sort of thing, you know? Because I did think it's, it seemed a bit it seemed a bit tight when it started up. It might, it might have a fresh piston in it, maybe. I don't know. Right, let's uh, let's get this in in the right position. I'm gonna put that there. Maybe I won't. Where's it gone? I see. I don't know why there's a jubilee clip sitting there for. That's a bit random. Right, that goes that way, like that, that will go on there like that, that will go there, that can move that away, cool, bloody hell, it's easier to get off than it is to get back on again. Oh, oh, you cock. You cock. I can tell it's going to be one of those afternoons. Just for the fact that I haven't got anything done that I wanted to get done yet. And now I've got to wrestle with Jubilee clips. And other silly things. Alright, there we go. Alright, so... Put that in the position that it's supposed to be in. God, what's the matter with that bloody cock, eh? Jesus. Right, where's the pliers? The cock is on. We ain't getting any dripping yet. Nothing's coming out of there yet. Must be a good sign. Sweet. Let's move the bike over a bit, see if it comes out. We don't want anything to come out at all. Nothing should come out. So it looks like we got ourselves a good one there. Sweet. Let's get rid of this stupid little Jubilee clip what's going around here for some reason. Alright, that's that got rid of. That's that sorted out. I'm going to oil the chain up in a minute. Look at that cobweb. Has that got a bolt in it? That hasn't got a bolt in it, I think. Or is it? No, it hasn't. Right, gear lever ain't got a bolt in it. Just sort that out. I found these when I was walking around earlier. Look how cool they are. This must have been like some kind of little water fountain because it's got a little hole. Obviously, I think some water must have sprayed up or something. But it's got little frogs everywhere. They may be supposed to be mushrooms or something. All growing around it. And they're on a log. And I found this little. I don't know what he's supposed to be. Maybe some kind of gnome. I think it looks like a gnome. A gnome with 
something in his hands. <laughs> don't know what's got in his hands. A little button up jacket with a little Santa Claus hat on. And I don't know what this is. I think this is supposed to be part of that. Maybe. Maybe this is supposed to sit on that. I don't know. Maybe it does. But it's got a similar design with the white mushrooms and it's obviously supposed to be a tree stump. Something goes in there. I wonder if, I think this is supposed to sit on that maybe, I don't know, I'll have a look in a minute. But, uh, so, now I found this little girl. I wonder where sh she came from. With these ones, and this, whatever that's supposed to be, just imagine, I, I think these could have come from some big old mansion somewhere. What I want is, I want a gargoyle, that's what I really want. She's got like a, a hare or a rabbit in her arms, she's got little laces on her top, little hand in her pocket there, looks like she's got boots on, and a little dress, I don't know what, it's like a pattern on her dress or something, a little bow on the back of her dress, I thought that was so cool, just lying there, so I thought I'd better pick that up, she's got a little bow in her hair, but then look where this, just think where this could have been, what is it supposed to be, like a jack tour, or something? Some kind of bird, that would have sat on top of a plinth or something probably. It's like it's got a bit of a spider's nest on it, but never mind. I'm going to give him a wash down in a minute, give him a little bit of a clean up, his beak's a bit broken off. But uh, we'll soon, well we won't sort it out, but it won't matter. Just imagine, I wonder where these ones actually come from. So cool, man. There's a few more actually, I might go and, I might get them at some point. And there. Uh, I thought that this one was especially kind of creepy. Look at her face. What's that all about? Hey? <laughs> I think I might put that one on top of that one. I might even better rig a little pump up or something get the water to come out of there maybe like it's supposed to I think that would be pretty cool and I put my little gnome somewhere I don't know where he would be, a gnome or something sweet and also, while I was out and about picking up them gnomes and whatever else they're bloody heavy man I had a long walk and all trying to pick them up and scurry along and stuff them in the van before anyone saw <laughs> but there was, I see some people and one guy had a flat tyre and uh, there was another couple of people and they were fanning it around with this pump trying to get it to work and it wouldn't work so I was like, oh, like, what's the matter? and they said, oh, well, I've got a flat tyre I said, oh, I can see that and uh, I said, this pump won't work I said, yeah, I can see that and all so he went, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do I said, neither do I but I said, what are you going to do with that pump then? he said, oh, I don't know and then I said, check the fuse. So we checked this fuse and it looked all right. Well, he said it looked all right. I didn't actually look at it myself. He said it looked all right. So I was like, oh, well. And then he went to chuck it in a skip. I said, oh, whoa, dude, what are you doing? He said, I'm putting it in a skip. I said, I can see that, but don't do that. I'll have it. So he said, all right. So give me the bag. Looks like it's fairly new, actually. And uh, he gave me this pump. So I'm going to have a look at that later on, see if I can get it to work. On and off. That must be on then. That must be off. Yeah. I've got one very similar to this, actually. This is the more expensive version of my one. So, yeah. The first thing I'm going to do is change the fuse and see if I can get it to work. In fact, actually, I'm going to have a look now, just quickly. I'm, I'm a bit rushed for time, really. Well, I'm not. But I've got loads of stuff to do. But I'm going to have a quick look at that fuse and replace it and see if I can get it to work. Right. It's, uh... A bit of a mess in here, so I can't really put much. I'm, I'm, this is the radio shack, and I'm sort of in the middle of messing around with it, trying to get it to go all right. This is the fuse that was in this pump. It's uh, it's a 10 amp, but it looks all right. I haven't tested it with a thing. I've got a 15 amp here. Just going to put it in, just for you know, testing purposes, to see what's going to happen, um, and see whether. It was just a fuse or whether the pumps had it or there's a loose wire or something. But when, when the guys were trying to pump up their tyre, 
nothing would happen. They tried two cars, so it weren't the cigarette lighter socket, but it was broken or nothing. So, new fuse in there. Let's plug it in this PSU, and let's turn the PSU on and see what happens. <laughs> Here we go. We're on. <laughs> oh dear. That's funny, man. It was just a fuse, after all that. And it pumps. There's air coming out of it as well. There we go. It just shows, man. Don't throw something away before you've checked it out first. These these particular ones are about 30 quid, these ones. These these are a bit more expensive. These are about 30 quid, these ones. So I got myself a 30 quid pump for nothing. Sweet. <laughs>